All right, guys. So in section 11.7, we are going to switch gears from talking about angles and how they relate to a circle to now talking about lengths of segments and how they relate to a circle. So to begin with, if we have two chords which are intersecting in the interior of the circle, but not at the center, then the product of the two segments along one chord is going to be equal to the product of the two segments along the other chord. So looking at this diagram, what we'd be able to say then is the product of the two segments AE and BE. So that would be again... If you took AE multiplied by BE, that would be the same as taking CE times DE. Okay, so let's take a look at an example here. So that means that on this circle, if we were to take 6 multiplied by X, that would be the same as taking 8 multiplied by 3. So then if we simplify that, we would say that 6x equals 24, since that's what 8 times 3 would be. And then to get x by itself, just divide both sides by 6, and we'll get that x is equal to 4. Our second property of length of segments tells us that the length of two secants intersecting in the exterior of the circle is going to be the product of the segment outside of the circle and the entire segment along one secant is going to be equal to that same product for the other secant. In other words, if we were to look at this diagram, what this property says is that if you take this length a times or a to b and multiply that by the entire segment from c to a, that that is the same as doing the same thing on the other side. In other words, that's the same as taking a to d multiplied by e to a. In other words, take small, multiply by big, and then do that again on the other side. So let's take a look at an example of this. So that would mean that if we take 3 multiplied by x, that should be equal to taking 4 multiplied by 9. So then if we simplify that, 4 multiplied by 9 is 36. And to get x by itself, just divide by 3 to get that x is equal to 12. Our third and final property that we're going to talk about is how a secant, like we just saw, is related to a tangent. And so he said the product of the segment outside of the circle and the entire segment along the secant is equal to the product of the tangent segment multiplied by itself. In other words, kind of like what we had last time, if you have a to b multiplied by the entire distance a to c, that that should be the same as taking a to d and squaring it, or multiplying it by itself. So let's take a look at an example of this. So in this example, what that's saying is that if we take 3 multiplied by 12, that should equal x multiplied by itself, or x squared. If we simplify that, 3 multiplied by 12 is 36. And so then to get x by itself, take the square root of 36, which the square root of 36 is 6. And there would be our answer.
So that's all the properties. Let's just go ahead and do some extra example problems, kind of mixing them together and having to remember which property it is that we would use. So on this first one, we've got two different chords intersecting in the middle, rather in the interior of this circle. So remember, this is where you take the product of the two segments and set them equal to each other. In other words, we'd say that 8x is equal to 7 multiplied by 10. And then when you simplify that, you'll get that 8x has to equal 70. So divide both sides by 8 to get that x is equal to 8.75. All right. For this next example, it looks like we've got a secant and a tangent. So remember that when we've got both of those, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the outer part by the entire piece. So that would be x multiplied by 4x. That's going to be equal to our tangent squared. So that would be x multiplied by 4x equals 8 squared. So let's go ahead and simplify that a little bit. x multiplied by 4x is going to be 4x squared. And then 8 squared is going to be 64. So the first thing we'd want to do is divide both sides by 4. That'll give us x squared is equal to 16. And then to get x, we need to then take the square root of 16, which the square root of 16 is just 4. And there would be our entire answer. All right. For this next example, we've got our two secants, which means we want to take the outer piece multiplied by the entire piece. So for the first one, we've got our outer piece, which is four, and then the entire piece would be eight plus four, which is 12. For the other side, we'll have our outer piece, which is X, multiplied by our entire piece, which is eight. So then to simplify that, four multiplied by 12 is 48 x multiplied by 8, we would probably want to write that as 8x. So then we'll go ahead and divide both sides by 8, and that'll leave us with 6 being equal to x, and there's our final answer. All right, one last example that we're going to take a look at. Kind of the same idea is that for our first part, we want to take our outer part of this segment multiplied by the entire part of this segment, which, since we don't know what x is, we'll just have to say whatever x plus 5 would be would be that outside part. In other words, if we take x multiplied by x plus 5 and make sure that that goes inside of parentheses, that that should be equal to the other part, the tangent, squared. So then we'll go ahead and distribute x multiplied by x is x squared. x multiplied by 5 is 5x is equal to 6 squared, which is 36. Since we have an exponent of 2 and there is a middle term, we do need to get this set equal to 0. So let's go ahead and let's actually show that step. Let's go ahead and subtract 36 from both sides of the equation. So now we'd have the x squared plus 5x minus 36 is equal to 0. And then let's go ahead and try to factor this first. And if factoring doesn't work, we'll try some other method. Remember, we'll take a times c. That's 1 multiplied by negative 36, which is negative 36. And then b goes underneath, so positive 5. So we need numbers that multiply to be negative 36 and add to be positive 5. And I think the two numbers that are going to work for us are going to be positive 9 and negative 4. So then what we'll do is we'll take our number that was in front of x squared, we'll put it above each of those numbers, and look to see if we can simplify 
Since it's a 1, we shouldn't be able to. So our two factors are going to be 1x plus 9 from the left side and 1x minus 4 for the right side. So then to solve, set each of those equal to 0. So x plus 9 equals 0 and x minus 4 equals 0. And then we'll just solve each of those equations. So for the first one, we'll subtract 9 from both sides to get that x is equal to negative 9. For the second, we'll add 4 to both sides to get that x is equal to positive 4. Now keep in mind, the answer needs to make sense in the context of our uh, diagram. And when you think about it, a negative length is not going to make sense. So we're going to get rid of the negative 9 as our answer. But positive 4 should. Positive 4 would make sense. We'll go ahead and keep that as our answer. And at that point, guys, we are done with this section. In the next section, we're going to look at how you can write equations of a circle. That'll be our last section for Unit 11. Until then, have a great rest of your day.